So, what we've got here so far is that. I want to actually go back into the compositor and uh, focus on uh, getting that glare to be perfect. So I'm just going to go to the node editor and then I'm just going to render the image again. Right. Right, what we got here. Wait for it to finish. Completely finish. There we go, done. And go back to this. And I don't think the size, I think the size, let's set the size to 6. Let's see what this, that does to it. So as you can see now, we're getting it a little bit better. What does the threshold do for this? If I just set it up to 5.7, see what it does. No, it just blows up the screen. Oh, no, it didn't do anything. Uh, 0 0.2. This is this is what I like. Oh, this is a... Oh, that doesn't look very good. This is what I like to do to test out um, what each button does in Blender. You just set the settings up and see if it blows up or see what happens. Just It's quite funny. A way to uh, work out how to uh, use Blender. I'm just going to shrink this down. And then let's give it another render. So yeah, as you can, so that's this is what we're trying to do. We're going to get it to, uh, so it's going to fall down, and then we're going to set up a, a big explosion to where it went, like where it landed, and then obviously the uh, it's going to shake. There's going to be a bit of a shaking in the uh, camera, so we're going to use go into the animator tool and use some. Um, noise method to uh, animate it that looks perfect for what we want at the moment so I'm just going to lose it like that that looks perfect so what we've got is barely barely noticeable at the moment it falls down there like that and it looks brilliant right I just want to see if I can set it back so I want yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back quite a bit because there are four of these, uh, oh no, there's not, there's three of these, like, trenches that are modelled. And I want it to, the explosion to hit this one and then maybe go on to that one a little bit. So, I want to drag this back. So, it hits, I don't know if I have to re, yeah, I have to re-keyframe them now. Great. Clear keyframes. Brilliant. Right. Drag this all the way back here like that yeah that'll do go to frame 50 insert the keyframes go to frame 65 just gonna drag it down so it just hits the floor insert keyframes so we've got this right what does that do to the image half it means that I need to drag it up because now we can see it in the view because it's far away Great, let's do some more keyframing. Right, let's drag it all the way up there. It will not be seen when it's up there. Go to frame 50. Insert some more keyframes. 65. Oh, I can't even see it now. Drag it down. Insert keyframes. Right. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> it's just this is the this is my uh Trial and trial and error, error, trial and error method for keyframing. Just trying out whatever it is and see if it works, and it never normally does. So what we've got is some god awful looking thing at the moment. But if we go into the rendered view, we get it to look like this. Wait for it. Right, let it composite. So that's what we've got so far, and it's not going to look very good until we've, you know, added the um, the explosion on this side, which is what we're going to do now. And I'm going to start by uh, simulating the explosion first using Quick Effects, which is very useful. So I'm just going to work out roughly where the it hits. So it hits about there. So I'm just going to maybe 
center it there, right in the middle of the of this uh, trench little bit there, what I've got going on here. So I'm just going to add a UV sphere wherever it's gone. I should have really set the uh, the point over here, but it's all right. And I'm just going to shrink it down so we can't see it in the camera view. I'm just going to drag it down here. And because this is an explosion, it will actually blow up all the little segments here. So I'm just going to go into the edit mode and I'm just going to subdivide it one time just so we've got one so we've got a lot of pieces that will explode and then we're going to go straight into object quick effects quick explode now what we've got to do here is we've got to make sure we've got exactly what we want because if i click off this if i click on something else it will get rid of these settings which is really annoying in most cases because you have to add the sphere back in and change back the sec settings so you can't see it at the moment so what I want to do is I want to start the start frame to be uh, 65 so when the when it actually hits so I'm just going to re cache that and on here we go slowly and then it explodes okay but obviously it's not exploding good enough yet, so I'm going to set the outwards velocity to about 5 for now. I'm just going to re-cache that and let it go again. Right, so the explosion is getting better. I'm just going to set the number of pieces to 250, then do it again. So I'm going to move. I'm going to change those planks in a minute. So look if if we do this slowly, if we just watch the thing hit and the explosion at the same time, see if they actually coincide and work properly. So that's very quick. I can't. I wasn't looking. If you blink, you'll miss it. So that looks brilliant at the moment. I'm just going to set this up to seven. And I'm going to set the pieces to three hundred. This is a. This isn't no small explosion. This is a big one. This is a big. This was a big missile. This was. The hit. So uh, yeah, I'm um, just check my recording. Oop. Right. Let's go again. I keep on saving it because whenever it freezes, I'm wary that it might break. Right. That is getting better. Right. That's. That is it. That we've got it. I think. I think that we've got what I want. Let's just watch it here. Right. Yep. Yeah. And now, what we've got to do now before we even go into the smoke and fire simulator, which will just be killer for the uh, <laughs> how fa for the lagging and how fast it's going to go. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, set up the collision for these so actually uh because i want the particles the little pieces to uh stop pretty much where they are i don't want to because if i uh, go into this and add collision that means now the explosion will collide with this the pieces but they will bounce quite a bit if we look at this now fit got like that the pieces they do some pretty weird stuff so at the moment they all just stop which looks like a good idea so I uh, would just need to do this for the whole for, for all the pe for all the uh, objects in this scene that actually collide with this explosion modifier so let's go like that save it again and like that now it actually goes as far as the other side of the trench and this one as well so we're going to have to add a collision on this add a collision on this and add a collision on this and add a collision on this I don't think it will be necessary to add a collision on all these planks of wood here but I, what I'm going to do just just quickly I'm just going to take all these planks of wood I'm just going to bring them down because it, it's really annoying so now they touch the floor basically straight away we don't want anything going wrong with that 
and ready. Right, let's go into the camera view. So we can see the explosion here, and it's looking quite quite nice at the moment. And now, and then it all hits here, and this is where this is the problem that I was uh, telling you about just a second ago. All the pieces they stop there, however they hit this side of the uh, trench and they bounce off, which is not what I really want because it's not <laughs> because when an explosion happens it doesn't normally bounce. So if I show you that there. If we look at those pieces there, they bounce off. But I'm not sure if that's going to be a big, a big problem. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm just going to stop the recording.